So we all know his record three and six in the finals. Keep in mind, this is the second time he's been swept. The Spurs swept him in 2007. So Max, what is getting swept mean for LeBron's legacy? I don't know that it hurts his legacy. I disagree with Stephen A about this. If, if that's where you're going, Stephen A, with your last comment, I don't know that it hurts his legacy. I think what it points out is one thing to get swept when you have a team that can compete. When you have a squad that has no business in the finals, let alone competing with another squad who is considered among the greatest ever assembled, then, um, look, I, I think, if anything, the fact that you even got to the finals is to your benefit in terms of your legacy. And I, I've mentioned this before, Magic Johnson, swept in the finals. Magic Johnson is obviously the greatest point guard who ever lived and one of the very greatest players of all time. Shaquille O'Neal swept in the finals. By the way, Magic's team was hurt and Shaq's team was young, but they were both, they both had a crew. They both had a crew capable of competing at least. And Shaq was swept by Hakeem Olajuwon. He had Penny Hardaway and Horace Grant and others swept Shaq, obviously, one of the greatest centers of all time. In fact, when he says the most unstoppable force and everything, a lot of people agree with him. Shaq was an all-time great, indisputably. And the fact that he was swept doesn't seem to be held against him, nor does it seem to be held against Magic. By the way, Shaq was very nearly swept again when he had Kobe Bryant against the Detroit Pistons in 2004. It was a gentleman's sweep. Kobe hit a shot that forced overtime at home, the only game the Lakers won. Now, does that make a big difference to me? Does it really mean a lot to me that Kobe was able to win the one game? No, to tell you the truth. Like, I love the fact that Iverson was able to do it. He gets extra credit for beating the Lakers that year when he really had no business beating them even one game, one of the all-time great postseason teams of all time. The only game they lost all playoffs was to Iverson. Amazing for Iverson. He gets extra credit. But it's not like I would have taken credit away and been like, damn, AI, you couldn't get even one against the Lakers. I recognized he was totally outgunned. And the fact that LeBron basically got one game one, 51, 8-8, eight and, eight, and through no fault of his own, it was taken away from him in a number of ways. By the way, the refs were consistently siding when they were wrong with the Warriors. The War Even though the Cavs got more calls, the Warriors got all the bad calls. Whenever the refs were wrong, it favored the Warriors. And... George Hill misses the free throw. Okay, guys, do that. And J.R. Smith doesn't know time or score. And Ty Lue apparently wasn't aware they had a timeout. And the refs review to play. Like, it took all that for him to lose that game against these Warriors. I, don't th I just don't think it's a big deal. He got swept, Stephen A. Well, listen, you don't have to think that way. I'll do it for you because the fact of the matter, it was a big deal because we're talking about the game of basketball here. And I repeatedly bring up the fact that one player, one superstar can get you a game. And that's what you're looking for right here. Why, Max? Because it's indicative of the level of heart inside your chest. And when we talk about the comparisons to Michael Jordan and LeBron James, this is why it's never been a comparison to me because I'm not looking at just talent. I'm one of those people who believes that Stars of this generation, like stars of previous generations, always piggyback off of the generations before them. In other words, Dr. J might not have been what he was if it wasn't for Connie Hawkins. MJ may not have been who he was if it were not for Dr. J. You know, the same thing with Kobe. The list goes on and on. That's the way I view things. And so when I'm talking about a player, obviously you can look at guys, and the mind's eye will tell you, well, this guy couldn't shoot this way, or this guy didn't have this level of athleticism or physicality. He didn't create as many matchup problems or what have you. But when it comes down to the brass tacks of situations, you're going to measure what's inside somebody's chest when it really counts. Case in point, when you look at Friday night and what happened in game four, let me tell you what would have happened if it were Michael Jordan. He might have taken every damn shot. He might say, hell with this. I ain't going out like this, period. You understand? I remember a regular season game, for example. We don't have to bring up, I'll use Jordan as an example, but it's applicable to the Kobe's of the world and various other superstars when we talk about these kind of comparisons. It was a regular season game, Max, you might remember this, and the New York Knicks were being favored. Everybody was saying they're coming for the, they're coming for the Chicago Bulls. They're coming for Jordan and these boys. Just a regular season game. And the Knicks were blowing Jordan and the Bulls out by about 37. I mean, running them out of the garden. Michael Jordan gets hurt. Michael Jordan goes to the locker room. His night is supposed to be over. De you know, limping, damn near incapable of running. This dude gets strapped up, comes back on the basketball court, 
demands that Phil Jackson puts him back in the game, starts diving for loose balls into the stands and everything else, just to let the Knicks know, yeah, you got us tonight, but don't think for one second that you have arrived. I'll be waiting for your behinds next time. That was the mentality. And so what I'm saying is, is that when you're looking at stuff along the lines of players, if you're talking about ability, who the hell's going to question that LeBron James isn't on the Mount Rushmore of the NBA with his talents and skills and his accomplishments? What you're talking about is that extra little something inside your chest. Why did AI get you one? That's because of heart. It wasn't because of skill. It's because of heart. Why, do, why would Jordan have gotten you one? It's because of heart. Why would Kobe Look. have gotten you one? It's because of heart. What you're looking at people and you're seeing what they bring to the table. I'm saying that when you're talking about the greatest ever and that conversation formulates, you're looking at that extra little something inside somebody's chest that's going to go you. all out. And that's that.